I'm Melissa Millett, a professional dog trainer. I work with seven dogs and one cat to put on stunt dog shows across the country. All my animals are unique. Each one has an amazing backstory. And today, you'll hear one of them. This is Doggy Diaries. Pickles was the most beautiful puppy I had ever seen. I first saw her when she was only four weeks old and I fell in love with her instantly. She was only four pounds when I brought her home from the breeder in Oshawa. Bella wasn't impressed with a new pup in the house. She was used to being my little princess. Sophia played the role of mama dog to her. Pickles curled into her as if she was cuddling right into her own mother. The three quickly became the best of friends. Bella warmed up to Pickles, teaching her the ropes. Everyone fell in love with Pickles. People would come flying out of stores or chase me down to get a better look at her. She was simply adorable. Woo, that is so awesome. I could tell that she was also incredibly sensitive and a touch on the timid side. Through positive reinforcement, Pickles overcame her fears and started learning a lot of different tricks. Okay, go, cut. As Pickles' resume grew, so did her confidence. She was making great strides to becoming a truly great stunt dog, but that's when tragedy struck. On June 21st, 2015, we were traveling home on the 401 after performing a stunt dog show in Toronto. But before we got back to London, our car was struck by a dangerous driver. Before the other driver hit us, other motorists had already reported the dangerous driver to the police. He was going over 140 kilometers per hour. We were in the far right lane towing a 16-foot trailer. He collided with our truck and we lost control, went into the ditch and rolled multiple times. Um, and the truck rolled. The police report said that it went airborne and the airbags didn't go off. I was unconscious until emergency workers showed up. They said that I started mumbling at the scene and that's how everybody knew that I was alive because they didn't know. They didn't know if I was gonna be okay. They didn't know anything. So everybody that was attending to me was standing around while I was lying sideways in the car that was sideways, unconscious with uh, my head on the ground and my ponytail just full of mud. Unconscious at the scene and transported by ambulance, I woke up in the hospital wondering where I was, vaguely remembering losing control of the vehicle. Immediately my concern was for my eight-year-old daughter and whether she had survived the accident. When I worked up the courage to ask, I found out that she was in stable condition. I asked about the dogs and the hospital staff did not know. Roughly an hour later, a police officer came in to inform me what had happened to them. All of the crates were broken open and the dogs were running around, so I don't know if they were thrown out of the car as it rolled or if they ran. I'm not sure, I never got that information. I do know that Sophia ran straight up the highway and somebody caught her saw the accident and walked her back and that Bella and Oreo stayed here. Oreo uh, broke off her toenails, possibly tried it. She was in a wire crate. Some of them were in airplane crates and Oreo couldn't walk. And Bella was looking for me. She was visiting from person to person, trying to find me, they think. And when Oreo crawled up to somebody, Bella followed Oreo and they put all the dogs in a car for safety. 
our trailer is wrapped, so it was a big wrapped trailer. You knew it was a dog show, but nobody knew how many dogs to look for. Um, Sienna was talking at the scene, so they could get some sort of an idea, but it was, from what I understand, pure chaos. Most of my friends, everybody that was close to me, <clears throat> was here in this field searching for pickles and butters. They were wondering if the dogs were injured and pushing apart the grass, walking to these farm houses to see if the dogs had shown up. But the dogs had run straight down to the way scale and to the highway from there. Around 6 a.m. is when they found Butters beside the highway. She didn't make it. She was found by a dear friend who ironically was the one who came with me when we picked her up as a baby. He was there for her in the start and the end. And she was at least found by someone who loved her. Pickles was first sighted not long after the accident. She had run to the inside lane of the 401 between the median and the fast lane. Anytime someone attempted capture, she would try to jump the median, run into traffic, or bolt in the opposite direction. We learned afterwards that she likely stayed beside the median the entire time she was missing. We heard about incredible attempts to catch her. Truckers would radio each other anytime there was a sighting. Bikers were trying to corral her. A policeman was driving behind her with his lights on. Good Samaritans were calling 911 to report seeing her. In the morning, roughly nine hours after our accident, an animal care and control officer happened to be driving by on her way to work and saw Pickles. She decided she wasn't leaving without her and managed to use her expertise to capture her. So I was actually driving into work uh, in the morning. I was on the highway. Uh, I believe it was close to Putnam Road. I was in the uh, fast lane getting ready to pass a vehicle. And I just happened to notice something up against the median. And I initially thought it was a cat. So I was like, why is a cat on the highway? And then I looked closer and I was like, oh, it's a dog. So I thought, you know, I went into work mode. I was in my uniform, ready to drive into work. So I pulled into the median as close to the dog as possible. I put my four ways on. I got out of my car, went to go after the dog and she started to run backwards facing traffic. So I ran after her a little bit. I kept trying to call at her. Cars were honking at me. And I thought, well, she can't hear me calling to her. So I decided to get back into my car, had the four ways on, started to reverse down the highway in the median lane. I finally got close enough to her. I opened up the door. I yelled at her, come here, come here. She could hear me better. She got close enough that I just reached out, grabbed her by the collar and put her in the car, closed the door. So perfect timing. I mean, looking at the highway, I just, I can't believe that she, I mean, what, it, how long was she, like nine hours? So I heard afterwards. Yeah. So I just have a lot of questions about, like, what did she look like? Did she look, was she limping? Was she huddled, huddled in the corner? Did she look terrified? No. All I remember, like I said, I initially thought it was a cat. Mm -hmm. So when I realized it was a dog, she did start to run away from me a little bit. And then now that you bring it up, when I did finally catch her, I did notice that her pads were worn. Mm -hmm. So then when we got her back to the shelter, we made sure that we started to put some bandages on that. Because I remember that now that you say that. Yeah. When you guys came to pick her up, I said, hey, your friends came to pick her up. And I was like, well, her feet are a little bit worn. So make sure you get them looked at. I mean, I just want to say 150% thank thanks to you and to all the professionals that work out there risking their necks to catch the animals. Thank you. And, um, you know, I, she's my little sweetheart. She's yep. my baby. And when I woke up in that hospital room and I knew that Butters was gone, mm -hmm. I said, just please catch pickles. Somebody yep. please catch pickles. And I received word that you had. And I know. I know. Perfect my timing. Thank you. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors.
If hot rods, street rods, choppers, and customs are your thing, then visit our showroom and website for a complete list of suppliers for all your parts and accessories. In Dogs We Trust offers puppy, basic, intermediate, and advanced group classes in a climate-controlled location right in the heart of the city. Private lessons for specific issues are also available. Six dogs per class, internationally recognized trainer, thousands of dogs trained. Learner's Business Law Lawyers offer a depth of expertise few other firms can match. As one of Southwestern Ontario's largest law firms, we've handled some of the region's biggest and most complex business transactions. Our expertise is proven. Visit learners.ca. Lilibet and I could go out into the crowd. Let them go. If it wasn't for you, I never would have had the opportunity to be just ordinary. The most extraordinary night of my life. Is it true that neither of you thinks you're from this planet? Are we a mistake, Carla? Third wall is not functional. There is a body rotting inside. The people here need water. That's perfect. This is Rogers TV, London. Before the accident, Pickles was one of my biggest stars. When she was only four months old, she performed live on Family Channel with my six-year-old daughter. When she was one and a half years old, she was chosen as one of the top stunt dogs in North America. And just recently, she was featured skateboarding through the crowd of the Detroit auditions of America's Got Talent. She was making huge strides for a dog that wasn't even two years old. When she was on Breakfast Television Toronto, she completely bombed and was too nervous with the television cameras. Okay. And this is her first time in a big studio, so... Um, oh, that's okay. Are you ready? Are you ready, Mimi? Come here, ready? And I think she's had it. That's so okay, but you're just starting to train you're her. Great job, sweetheart. You get to look pretty. Okay, you just look pretty, and we're yeah. gonna we're gonna um, and we're gonna show you another one. Yeah, so Bella's show me got another. her skateboard. She really likes her bike. <laughs> By the time we got the call for Good Morning America, we knew she was ready, but. The BT segment was still in the back of our heads. GMA's inaugural Paul Limpets. This morning, the stage is set. Bella, a sassy and fearless challenger, will take on Pickles, a precocious rookie ready for glory. She could not have done any better on Good Morning America. She nailed everything. And finally, oh. she's come a long way, and she's even become our biggest star. People used to discuss Bella as our biggest star, and now Pickles is the name that you hear most often. When Pickles was one and a half years old, she could push a shopping cart, hide in a suitcase, drive a mini car, skateboard, and much more. So dogs love having a job. Uh, providing tricks and teaching tricks makes them feel like they have a purpose, gives them a job, decreases behavioral issues like hyperactivity, and overall is excellent for their well-being. They love learning new things and problem solving. So not only is it good for Pickles to practice what she knows, she loves being challenged with what she doesn't know. So a few of the things that I'm teaching her are learning how to skateboard standing up on two legs. So here's the method that I'm using to teach her right now. First, I'm teaching her to stand on a board <laughs> with two legs. Then I move to the skateboard. You ready? Okay, ready? Get excited. Come here, ready? Ready, touch. Good, touch. Okay, ready? Human, like a human. Yes. Ready, off, spin. Good, ready? Human, human. Human. 
So what I'm trying to teach Pickles is to balance with one foot on something that is lower than a skateboard and one foot off. Um, I pulled out a clicker because I use a clicker for learning, but the clicker is not an everyday tool. So when the dog learns, you can fade the clicker. And if, with a shorter piece of wood, I can work my way up to a skateboard. Okay, you ready? Come here. Human, like a human. Good. Balancing on my leg and then pulling her paws off my leg for a second. Yes. Okay, ready? One more, like a human. Go, go. Like a human. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to move to the skateboard. I try various things. I try putting my foot on the skateboard to control the speed. I try having her pushing and then standing. And I'm going to see what works for her. Now in the end, when I'm teaching new tricks, if the dog is not taking to the trick, I will sometimes change gears. Pickles is very top heavy being a Boston Terrier. So this trick is sort of iffy. She may or may not get it. We will see. Okay, ready? Okay, go. Pickles, go. And like a human, human. Come. Okay, ready? Get up there. Like a human. Hop. Yes. Ready? Like a human. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Ready? Hop. Like a human. Ready? Touch. Human. Yes, human. Yes, good trying, good trying. Okay, ready? Ready, go, like a human. And up, yes, and up. Good girl, good, good trying. Okay, ready? Okay, come on. Come on, go, go, get up, get up, get up. Yes. Oh, you're going backwards. Here, ready? Sit, sit, sit. Go. And ready, go. And up. And up. Yes, good. Pickles is learning um, an exercise called scent discrimination. I lay out a bunch of items, and she's supposed to smell all of them and bring back the item that I touched. In order to teach this trick, first we start with scent games. I want her to find and search out a scent, just the scent. So we start with targeting. Yes. 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 Then I have her find and search out the scent in the room. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Mark. Very nice. Once she's learned this preliminary exercise, which essentially just teaches her use your nose. Using her nose is something that I've never asked her to do. It's an abstract thing, so I want to start that in an easy way. Now, on to the hard one. Now we're going to start with our actual scent discrimination exercise. Pickles has been taught to retrieve this dumbbell, which in itself is an exercise that can take up to four to six months for a non-retriever. You could fast track it with some dogs, but it is essentially sometimes a difficult thing to teach. Now I start with number four, and I want to impart my scent on it, so I'm going to rub my hands all over it, mostly on the bit, but everywhere. And when I do this in the early phases, I take a little bit of chicken that's also mixed in with the scent of my hands, and I rub that all over the one dumbbell I want her to retrieve. In order to make this an easier exercise for her to pick one retrieving dumbbell out of the pile, I have three different materials. This one is wrapped in leather. This is metal. This one is wood. Originally, I'm going to put the leather in with only the wood and the metal. That will make it easier for her to know which one to choose. So number four. Now I'm going to offer my hand in front of her nose for her to smell and point to the article. Find it. Number four. Very good. Mark. Down. In order to make it progressively more difficult, because eventually I want her to choose the article that I touched out of the pile of the same articles. So I'm going to add another leather. 
this time number two. Now I can touch the other articles. It is the article that I touch the most. Now initially in the learning phases I wouldn't touch any, but she's at that point where I can lightly touch the others. Number four. And a new spot. Find it. She brought me number two, so she has to go back and start all over again. She obviously was searching out the leather as opposed to my scent. I'm going to put the two number back and let her try to problem solve again. Fine. Yes, good job. Very good. Good job. Very good. Good. Yeah, that was the best one of all. All right, so we found this in the pile right next to the other leather. To me, that's a big success for today. You want to push it further, but you always want to finish on a good note. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. In Dogs We Trust offers puppy, basic, intermediate, and advanced group classes in a climate-controlled location right in the heart of the city. Private lessons for specific issues are also available. Six dogs per class, internationally recognized trainer, thousands of dogs trained. If hot rods, street rods, choppers, and customs are your thing, then visit our showroom and website for a complete list of suppliers for all your parts and accessories. The OHL on Rogers TV. We've got you covered. For 25 years, you've been helping to make our roads safer by doing the right thing. You've been the designated driver, you've stayed over, called home, you've called a cab or a friend, and planned ahead. Let's keep doing the right thing. Support sober driving by getting yourself and your friends home safely. Do the right thing. Visit ArrivaLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. This is Rogers TV, London. All right, it's been about a year and a half since the accident, and Pickles has has uh, suffered some stress, but overall, she loves life, she loves working, and she found love with a new boyfriend. He's a French bulldog, Archie Brindleton. Now, she doesn't love other dogs. She can be around them, but she doesn't love their company, but she absolutely loves his company. So today, we're gonna meet her new boyfriend, and we're gonna enjoy each other's company by teaching a new trick. The funny thing is that Archie really doesn't do tricks. And we know that Pickles is a special dog that doesn't enjoy a lot of other dogs but that Archie being the mellow man and gentleman that he is, that that might work. So he's very eager to win the heart of Pickles, so I'm sure that given the opportunity, he's, he's gonna be able to adapt very quickly. I mean, who can turn down a, a handsome gentleman like this in uniform? Uh, he started going uh, public on Facebook in 2013 and uh, first started to gather a following by reviewing parks. And uh, unofficially, we think he's got the record for most parks visited by a single dog. He's at about 520 at the moment uh, from all around London and southwestern Ontario and as far away as West Virginia. We first approached the fire department after we'd exhausted all the parks in town and we started to do a new project where we visit interesting destinations in and around London. So we reached out to the fire department and asked if we could just have Archie take a tour of one of the stations. And when we came in to talk about it, we were surprised to find that the chief and the assistant chief and several other upper staff members were there wanting to talk to us about it. And by the end of that meeting, he had been appointed the official fire safety dog for London, Ontario. Uh, and now we help promote uh, special events and deliver fire safety messaging for the fire department. And that's been going really well. 
When we first met Archie, it was almost uncanny. He was sitting in our boardroom and you swore that he could actually understand us because he's kind of looking at us, we're talking about challenges, and it was just sort of like, don't worry about it, I can handle it. He just always sits so calmly. He has a calming effect. Different people in the office had seen him, like he just really pulls people in and calms them down. And uh, being a pet owner myself, I know that Archie would, would bring in a whole new segment of the population and, and kids in that. So while we have Sparky the fire dog, we, London Fire Department actually has its own real fire dog called Archie. His coat is actually a brindle coat, so his last name was kind of derived from that. So his name is Archibald Flubberford Brindleton. Flubberford, his middle name is because he's flubbery and he's very handsome like Robert Redford. All right, so we're here with Pickle's knight in shining armor, her new boyfriend and happy ending. They like spending time together and teaching and learning new tricks. Pickles is gonna demo and then we're gonna teach our little friend Archie how to do these tricks and then everybody at home can learn them as well. Okay, you ready Pickles? This one I call giddy up, giddy up. Good job. Good job, all right, Mark. All right, we'll bring in little Archie. Are you ready? Good job, buddy. All right, so I give Archie little treats for successive approximations and our first step is stay pickles. I wanted to put two paws on something that I will later transfer to my feet. Mark, stay. So Archie already knows this trick because he is a model, but we're gonna teach him two paws on the mark. Yes. Yes, okay release. Now later we transfer this behavior to our feet, but first I wanna start putting two paws on Something. If you're working at home, you can use a, piece, a book instead of a piece of wood. Okay, release. Now we're going to do it between our legs. Good boy. Here. Yes. Good boy. Yes. Okay, release. Next step, put the book or piece of wood on top of your feet. Archie. Yes. Okay, release. Next step, remove the book and have the dog put his feet on your feet. Archie. Yes. Toes pointed together. Yes. And then we're gonna add walking. Yes, good boy. Yes, very good. Okay, release. Good job. Good boy. Yeah. Right, Pickles? What do you think? Yay! Good job. Pickles still carries some anxiety from the accident, but working and performing are a stress release for her. She lights up. She is so passionate. And she also tries to steal the spotlight from everyone during the show by attempting to steal their tricks. We are so happy and grateful to still have her in our lives. She is a star and she shines bright.